All right, so today I want to compare the difference between the sugar ball python and the calico gene in ball pythons. And I was actually over on one of the reptile forums today, and I saw a post where people were discussing the difference between the sugar and the calico, and the conversation was pretty interesting. Some people were absolutely convinced that the sugar was exactly the same gene as the calico. Others thought they were two really similar lines of the same gene. Others were absolutely convinced that the sugar is a completely different gene than the calico and I'd say it's similar to other genes there's actually quite a few other genes that are really similar that have a lot of debate over if they're the same gene or if they're different genes for example you actually have the banana and the coral glow that are really similar I'm actually convinced they're the exact same gene although I've met quite a few people who are absolutely convinced the banana is completely different than the coral glow you also have the butter and the lesser really similar genes I think there's some overlap with the butters and the lessers, but I've actually seen some butters that are a lot brighter than some of the lessers, some lessers that are a lot darker than just about every other butter, so I think they're actually two different genes. And then you have some genes where almost everyone agrees they're completely different genes, like the cinnamon and the black pastel, although I have seen some people that are convinced that those are the same gene. So today I want to jump over to the internet and I want to look at the differences between the sugar and the calico ball python genes. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with this snake right here. This is a calico ball python. And when I first started in ball pythons about six years ago, I had this image in my mind of what a calico should look like. And it was pretty much exactly like this snake right here. And believe it or not, the calico is really variable from one example of the gene to the other. And if you actually take a look at this one, it actually looks pretty much like a normal ball python as far as the color and even the patterns. You'll actually see some alien heads on the side of the snake and the calico essentially what that does is it brings up the white on the side of the snake in this case you actually have a really high definition between the whites and the darks you have a really sharp line a really high contrast and I actually pulled up another calico over here take a look at this this is one that I actually produced in my collection last year and when I first produced the snake I was scratching my head I was like what in the world did I just produce what is that snake and I actually had to come over here on Morph Market and look through all the different calicos and sure enough a lot of the calicos don't have a lot of white coming up the sides. As a matter of fact on this one you don't really see hardly any white coming up the sides and the color is completely different than just your regular normal ball python. It almost has this gold color to a lot of the snake and the interesting thing is in a lot of your calicos you'll see this streaking pattern on the side of the snake where the pattern just kind of gets streaked out. It's extremely variable from one version of calico to the other. I actually pulled up another one over here. Take a look at this one. This is pretty amazing. And on some of the calicos, you'll get this kind of a, a completely different white where it's not a really like a really bright white with a really sharp definition. Sometimes it can be pretty pixelated. And look at the streaking on the side of this one. It's pretty amazing. And I found kind of one of the curious things about the calicos is they can really vary in color from one example of the calico to the other. You'll actually notice this one has a really bright yellow color to it. I've actually seen some calicos that are probably twice or three times as bright yellow as this one. Really super bright yellow. Almost like it has other brightening genes in it and that's just the characteristic of the calico by itself. So take a look at this one. This is kind of another weird example of a calico. It seems like they just keep changing from one example to the other. And if you actually notice on this one, it kind of has a gradual transition from the dark part of the snake to a lighter part of the snake on the bottom. It's not the random, really high definition white that you see on a lot of your calicos. And a lot of your calico combinations, a lot of times to pick out the calico, you can actually see this line right down the side of the snake where the top is a little bit darker and the belly is a little bit lighter. Even though you don't really see the, the really high white calico, which is characteristic, which I thought was actually originally characteristic of the calico. And sometimes you don't see the streaking like on this one. It's a pretty interesting gene. 
So I thought this was kind of an unusual example of the calico mixed with the spider. So this is just two jeans in one snake. And it's, it's pretty amazing how bright yellow this is. It's pretty amazing. And I think all this bright yellow is just coming from a really super bright yellow version of the calico, which really enhances the brightness of the snake. And the spider is a little bit tricky too, because a lot of spiders, you'll actually have a lot of white coming up the sides. And then you'd usually when you add the calico to the spider, you'll really bring that white up really high on the snake and you get a really tall white side on a lot of your calico spider combinations. But if you actually compare this one, which is really bright yellow, to the same exact snake over here, take a look at this. This is another calico spider and I'm convinced this is just another line of the calico that's not the bright yellow line, which is pretty amazing how it can really have a different effect in different combinations. All right, so if we compare the calico and all the variations of the calico to the sugar, take a look at this. This is pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, one of the snakes that I produced this year looked exactly like this snake, and I was scratching my head. I looked through all the calicos, and I could not find any calico that looked like this one. And come to find out, I found the sugar that looked <laughs> exactly like my calico. And it was pretty amazing. If you actually look at this one, it has almost this coppery, rusty brown color to it. And one of the combinations that I produced was the combination of my version of the calico that had this really kind of the orange coppery color to it mixed in with my pinstripe. I actually produced a pinstripe calico combination. Didn't have any white on the sides and it came out looking like a really gold coppery color. It's like probably one of the, my favorite combinations that I produced all year between the really amazing calico and the pinstripe. And the kind of the interesting thing is I thought you know, this version of Calico, you can actually use it as a dark jean in a lot of your dark combinations to really enhance some of your dark combinations, which is kind of another use of a certain line of your sugar. So take a look at this. Believe it or not, this is another version of the sugar. and It's pretty much almost equivalent to the variability that you see in the calico. Some of them are really dark and coppery looking and some of them are bright yellow like this. As you can actually see on this one, you actually have the line coming down the side of the snake with the, the transition between the darker top and the lighter bottom and the streaking on the side of the snake. And I actually pulled up another one over here. Take a look at this. This is another sugar of which I would have thought of some Someone had me this snake. I think, yep, that is a calico. Looks pretty much like the image that I have in my mind of a calico. Pretty much like a normal looking snake with this really bright white speckling all over the side. So I pulled up one more image over here. Take a look at this. This is kind of the potential between the spider and the calico. This is a crazy looking snake. This is actually the combination of the, this, well, this is the sugar and the spider with the super orange dream. So the sugar and the spider really bring the white all the way up to the top of the snake. And then I'm thinking that this is the version of the sugar that is really bright yellow. And then you add the addition of the super orange dream which is a brightening gene which really makes this combination really super bright that's pretty crazy so if you were to actually ask me uh, the, is the sugar the same as the calico you know I was looking through all the different sugars all the different calicos and I'm convinced both of them are really extremely variable so if, if you actually have a sugar and you compare it to my sugar I can almost guarantee your sugar is not gonna look like my sugar your calico is not gonna look like my calico and if we compare size Side by side the difference between the sugar and the calico I'd say probably nine times out of ten they're not going to look the same and people might be convinced that they're two separate genes but I'm convinced that they are pretty much the same gene because both of them are really variable and you could pick out certain examples of the calico certain examples of the sugar compare those side by side and they look pretty much exactly the same all right so what is time for the question of the day and one of Productions asks, is it bad to pair a male and a female ball python when they're hatchlings? We've had two of them together for a year now and we're thinking about breeding them. And that is a very good question. So personally, I would consider ball pythons to be solitary animals. You should probably separate the males and the females, especially once they reach breeding size. And it's kind of interesting. I've actually seen a lot of people successfully keep multiple ball pythons together in a group from hatchling to adult. It seems like it works the best 
when they start out as hatchlings. But let me tell you, if you actually take two adult males and put them together, sometimes they can fight. If you put a couple of females together, sometimes multiple females, sometimes that'll work, raising them all together in the same enclosure, but I wouldn't really recommend it. But if you actually have a male and a female in the same enclosure, you can actually run into problems because I've actually heard through the grapevine that the male can fertilize the female too early. They can actually breed at too early of an age. And if that female develops eggs and it's not to the proper weight, I've actually heard that it can't pass those eggs out of the body. Sometimes it could potentially kill your female. So what I would actually do is I would definitely separate the male and the female until the female is at least 1,500 grams. Although I have seen some people where they keep a male and a female adult ball python together in the same enclosure full time year round and they just reach in and pull out the eggs once a year. It's kind of an interesting setup, but I'd say most people don't recommend it and most people would say that ball pythons are solitary animals. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.